things that have continued to change and evolve over time for the purpose of Hollywood shock value, something they claimed Amber has become a master of and used to exploit an otherwise serious social movement. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all this, though, because that's all the time that we have for today. So stay classy, and I'll see you in the next one. There are so many reasons that people love to play Candy Crush. If you haven't tried Candy Crush yet, download the game. Here at Roundtable Pizza, when we say double play pepperoni, we really mean double. Wow, look at all that pepperoni. Look at all that pepperoni. Large double-play pepperoni pizza with our tradition. Idaho! Don't you change it now! I only said it because we're about to show oh, you! Oh, no! Hey. How well do you know the United States? Uh, well, I've lived here all my life, so... Alabama, yeah. Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Colorado, Florida, Florida, Georgia. City. Uh, sorry, no! Today, we're gonna see if we guess what state is home to the iconic state. I hope it's like the interesting state, not like the fake state. Like, I swear nobody lives in Montana. Uh-huh. Alright, this is a head to head battle with a tasty treat for the winner. Are you ready? I'm ready. <gasps> We've got a platter of skyline chili served in a classic way atop a pile of spaghetti with cheese. <laughs> Seriously, it's just like great and cheese. That's a mountain of cheese. I remember specifically. Being in this area and the locals were like raving. Skyline chili. So somewhere with like big screaming Miami. It's not. It's not giving me Hormel. I'm just gonna let you guys think that I'm stupid for this episode. And I will say you can either write a state or a city. Well, one place I know for sure it's not from is like Ohio. I remember going out. To oh my God! I don't know now. And it must be in Kansas. There are so many states. Three, two, one. one. I said <laughs> Illinois and Chicago? You can't. No, wait. Illinois is the state country. No. I went to that, huh? Seattle. Skyline Chili is named for the of Cincinnati Skyline. Yes! I, I saw you write Ohio. That's the only what? reason what? I said oh! that. interesting guessing game for me. Oh, oh, okay. This square-cut thick crust pizza is a certain city's style. Hmm. The horrible thing is that I know this style of pizza from it being at Little Caesars for a limited time. <laughs> you wrote it down already? But I've never been to this place. It's like a pie. This crust is like calling my name because I love crunchy. And the crust laps. It's really good. I love crust. I can eat all of it? No. Well, yes. Just not right now. Mm-hmm. The true fat ass would have known the name slogan when they were advertising that. And that was? Literally the, the state that we... Don't you change it now! I only said it because we're about to show Oh, it. no! Wait! Okay, we're doing it. I put Wisconsin. Hey! Uh, uh, it's Detroit, Michigan. I put Kansas. Yeah. I have no idea. This variation of a Sicilian pizza with thick crust of melted cheese. It's just Detroit style. Oh my god! <laughs> really? And it's favorite all over Michigan. She's just happy because she went in. Finally. I'm really shook because I just thought of a random state. Say, oh, wiggity, what now? Is this like some. So next up, we've got a bowl of clear clam chowder. Okay, now this is going to take some noggin work. I, it looks a lot like clam chowder. <laughs> You wrote because you're so basic. Don't touch the amount of potatoes. There are definitely not Thank supposed you, to be any potatoes. You write that? I didn't know you know it. Do you know where this is from? I have an idea of like region where it's from. But there's two types I've had. Neither one of them were clear. I don't know that many states. There's only one type of clam I like to dig into, if you know what I'm saying. No. I have a state. I don't. I, I'm gonna tell you right now. I don't know a city in that state the off the top of my head right now. I mean, it's it. I said Maine. You are kidding. What? Me. I said Montana. I Boston. Known for its absence of milk or cream, Rhode Island clam powder. Rhode Island. Oh. I was like, I know it's an East Coast one. Ah, son of a biscuit. 
kidding. I don't even know where Rhode Island is. I, I didn't know that was fake. I thought it was an island. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. Yeah. Oh, what is this? Holy mother, this is so beautiful. So this is delicious open-faced yeah, cheese cake turkey sandwich yeah, called a hot brown, and it is the most famous dish of this city. That's also what they call me at night. <laughs> hot brown. Hey. Hot brown.
family or where? Not really. Okay. <laughs> Only in the seven states. <laughs> you know? Thank you guys so much for watching. What did you think of this game? <laughs> If you struggle to lose weight, you must see this. A fat dissolving loophole has just been leaked that can dissolve 59 pounds. First and foremost, Hillary Burton. Back in 2008, Hillary Burton, an actress in Lethal Weapon, had been a co-host for MTV's Total Request Live. The show was a daily music video countdown that ran for 10 years. On the show, she would interview various celebrities and ask them their opinions on music and catch up with their lives and stuff. Very casual, hangout-style interviews. Anyways, in an incident that was caught on video, Ben behaved extremely inappropriately towards Hillary. He grabbed her non-consensually and groped her. The video resurfaced in 2017 at the height of the Me Too movement, when one Twitter user posted, quote, Affleck also grabbed Hillary Burton's breasts on TRL once. Everyone forgot, though. The tweet got enough attention that Hillary herself saw it and replied, quote, I didn't forget. In a later tweet, she recalled, quote, I had to laugh back then so I wouldn't cry. She then thanked the user who posted the video and brought up the encounter. Quote, seriously, thank you for that. I was a kid. I guess she had felt that her situation with Ben was pretty much swept under the rug, which is pretty right, honestly. I had no idea about the story at all until 2017, and let's just say that Ben's apology left quite a bit to the imagination. He tweeted out, quote, I acted inappropriately towards Miss Burton, and I sincerely apologize. And that's it. I know when it comes to cases like this, people love to default to, oh, well, it was a long time ago. While I can see that just maybe being a proper excuse for certain situations, what is absolutely inexcusable is how one decides to address it. Ben's apology missed the mark, and when you do regret a situation, rectifying it is the only way to ethically right it. I'm not sure if anything went on behind closed doors between the two and the ways of an apology, but either way, as far as the public is concerned, not cool, Ben. Let's get into my second point, and what I would say is kind of a pivot from what the title of this video is. Ben as a person and the paparazzi. I mean, if we're being candid here, yeah, Ben has issues. That's obvious, anyone can see it. But honestly, all of these issues, while not excuses, can be explained by his very clear depression and deep mental health issues. A lot of people's grievances with him can be traced back to his dumb youth. He was cocky and full of attitude after coming off the success of Goodwill Hunting. When he began dating Jennifer Lopez, one of the biggest stars in the world at that time, the media frenzy that resulted completely violated their privacy. Suddenly, everyone was taking photos of the couple in intimate situations, and stalking was so heavily normalized that we still see the effects of lecherous paparazzi activities to this day. That all started from their relationship. If you couple that with a string of mediocre movies, people just started to hate Ben Affleck. There was a bit he did with a Quebecois interviewer where he was being overly flirtatious with her. They had agreed to do it to promote a show she was hosting. She even stated that it was all a hoax, but people chose to ignore it in favor of trying to find a valid reason to hate on him, besides him being kind of a mediocre actor with serious issues. The actor has been on a decades-long journey of trying to control his substance use issues. His own father battled alcohol and its presence in his life. In 1997, on the heels of rave reviews for Goodwill Hunting, Ben decided to quit drinking for the first time. Quote, I just wanted to stop. I started regretting some things I did when I was drunk. But, sadly, it didn't end up working out for him, and Ben would soon revert to his old ways. He'd been in and out of rehab for years, including a stay in 2017 and in 2018. In fact, the 2018 stay was when Jennifer Garner, to whom he was divorced at the time, drove him to the hospital, despite them being separated and Ben being with another woman. She's a good person who genuinely saw Ben as a tragic case of both parental pitfalls and environmental stress combining to create bad habits that inadvertently harm those around him. She staged an intervention with Ben who would sadly suffer another relapse after a year of being sober. When speaking about his relapse, he stated, quote, My family history. The legacy of that is quite powerful and something that's hard to shake. I think, in turn, a lot of celebrities understand the pressure of the spotlight. To genuinely hate Ben Affleck for reasons other than being kind of a mediocre actor is to vilify those living with addictions and depression. In interviews, he stated that he feels more concerned about what his kids see and how they perceive their own dad 
Rather than what we see as an audience, our voyeuristic tendencies to look in on his life shouldn't mean anything in the face of making sure that his kids remain happy and know that their father loves them. Quote, I got to a place where the public perception was so different from who I am that I just stopped reading and stopped caring. But then, as my kids got older and started seeing the internet themselves, that's the difficult part. Even a sad Affleck meme, that was funny to me. I mean, there's nobody who hasn't felt that way in a junket. But when my kids see it and I think, oh, are they going to think that their dad is fundamentally sad or they have to worry about me? That's really rough. And I think, honestly, that's where our attention needs to lie. Ben shouldn't be vilified by people who don't really know who he is and feeling depressed and anxious should not be seen as him being a bad person because he's not. When he was on the Howard Stern show, his words were once again manipulated to paint the actor in a bad light. Quote, I had gone on and said how much we respect each other, in terms of him and Jennifer Garner, and cared about each other, and cared about our kids, and put them first, and went through our stuff. 